Hello everybody, Rendon here. Good morning, as of the time of recording this video this morning. Did you know that two-handed flails beat the hyper armor of a Wild Strike's Great Stars? If you didn't, you should. Flails are actually pretty good in this patch. Did you also know that if you press R2 and then in the middle of the animation on the S dot press the sprint press and hold the sprint button and then R2 you do a back step R2 and it's a true combo. It will hit every time provided that you're close enough to hit them with the first R2. Very inane statement, but <laughs> it's true. Did you also know that light rolls are still very annoying to catch and difficult to chase down? Uh, if you didn't, you should watch more of these videos and learn some more of these uh, again inane facts by Rendon here. <laughs> um, so I've been watching a lot of old I am Amish videos recently. Uh, no reason particularly. I just have been in a bit of a crave for Dark Souls 3. Um, enough that I've thought about, well, I don't need to download it. I've got it on disc. I've, I've thought about playing it again, uh, and I've reinstalled it on my PlayStation 5. Will I play it or not? Probably will, actually. <laughs> There's a lot of other things right now. Uh, as you know from my last videos, taking up my time. So we will see, um, but just wanted to get a couple of Elden Ring invasions done. I felt the itch to do it, and I was like, okay, well, I want to experiment with flails a little bit. I never really used them, uh, and I was like, the Knight Rider flail is the coolest one to me, uh, so I will make a dex build with it. Uh, getting somewhere in the range of 584 AR with this thing one-handed. Now, I am using the Lightning Crack tier uh, and the Leaden Hard tier on this, so that's boosting the damage a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> little very quick backstab here on this host who just you know wasn't really thinking about what he was doing it's all right but uh back to the i am amish videos um i watched a lot of i am amish back i think towards the end of when i was playing dark souls 3 actually at the beginning uh, i started out where i feel like a lot of people started out with very 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 early i think first chase the bro but i kind of got out of that pretty very fast went to saint riot um and watched him for a long long time still do uh, and then from there, kind of branched out to people like I Am Amish, Dang JM, Dashing Saint, you know, etc. Stuff like that. Um, uh, but a lot of the old I Am Amish videos are the ones I go back and enjoy watching because they're just, you know, they're pretty informative. Uh, he just talks about a lot of different topics in there. Uh, some He does some invasion breakdown videos. He does some state of invasions, uh, like 2018, 2019. He'll talk about, there's one recently I watched him talking about Frostbite and uh, Dark Souls 3 and whether it was more efficient to reset Frostbite or just leave the buff up. It was an interesting video to watch, especially because of how that conversation has evolved now <laughs> uh, in Elden Ring and at the end of Dark Souls 3. But I was like, okay, well, you know what? I will make sort of a, an I Am Amish style video like that. Um, there's, you know, in, in I Am Amish videos, it's not only the type of content that he talks about, but also the way he edits videos and things. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just kind of make a fun little callback video to, to his old stuff in the past. Um, this is, again, his name is Flail Man. <laughs> uh, he has two Knight Rider flails, uh, the S stock and the off hand. So yes, he's using off stock. Uh, am I the best at off stock? No, but uh, I'm learning. Um, and the reason he has the flails are A, obviously he wants to test them, but B, um, because they're actually decent in patch 1.10. I actually have three flails on this build. Two are Knight Rider flails, uh, and I use them, I'll switch back and forth. You'll see it to confuse players that I fight because uh, one has Stormcaller on it and the other one has Lightning Slash. Lightning Slash is obviously the main one that I use for most of the invasion because of the raw damage I can get out of it and the Hyper Armor two-handed. Uh, but I will occasionally switch to the Stormcaller one to catch people who are being too aggressive uh, in that Stormcaller Ash. And if you know in 1.10, you're getting guaranteed damage if you catch somebody in that. Maybe even two people getting, or maybe even getting guaranteed damage on two people. So it's a really, really efficient um, aggression punish in this match so it's I don't know why everybody should probably be using Stormcrawler very good Ash of War uh, until it gets changed anyway um, I am almost did a lot of like breakdown videos and invasions and talking points like that I'm gonna do kind of a state of invasion video in this talking about invasions right now in Elden Ring and the player base but also just kind of a rough breakdown as you can see right now uh, a rough breakdown of the invasions as you can see right now I've been fighting two people for a while Phantom is using two-handed uh, thrusting sword, and the host is using a twin blade with Black Flame Tornado. I got caught in that Black Flame Tornado not too long ago, um, because if you get caught in the first bit like it used to be in the past, you're going to get caught in the entire ash. Uh, and I rolled and still got hit by it, even though I knew that I was going to get hit by it. It's better to roll and get a little more distance, um, unless someone knows a more efficient way to deal with it. 
uh, so you can get the more distance you have from a host and the phantom in that situation to get away, reset, drink a flask, the better. Um, the host has switched to dual whips though, which in 1.10 is actually pretty scary, especially if you're fighting more than one person, because those whips are going to stagger you every time. So I have to get rid of this phantom so that, that host can't stun me constantly with those whips and the phantom hit me uh, with that thrusting sword in between. But the phantom is gone. Spent a lot of time getting rid of him. That's good. But I only have one flask left. And I do kind of an inefficient trade here against this host with the flails. And so now I've lost a lot of that healing that I got from that one flask. So what do we do in this situation? Well, we use our brain. We drop a warming stone and we make the host come to us. He's not going to want to let me heal. So I am going to, you know, use that thought knowing that he's going to come attack me. And I'm going to use that hyper armor on the flail two handed to win trades in the warming stone. And he's not really thinking well about this. If he thought about it, he would just maybe try to wait out the warming stone or, you know, throw stuff at me, do some, you know, range damage. But he wants to end this fight. He thinks he can win uh, if he gets in here with me. But as you can see, he's very wrong. That bleed goes off, I get an off stock hit, and he's dead. If you use your brain in invasions like that, change up tactics, you can usually catch people uh, in bad thinking. I said bad thinking a minute ago. That actually is correct. It sounds really funny. But yes, you can catch people in bad thinking and win an invasion. I'm just going to prepare you. This is a much longer invasion than the last one. There are two people in a blue that I fight throughout this entire map. There's a second blue, but he just either dies immediately or, or jumps off and dies to, to not be a blue, which I salute you, which I salute them for uh, if that was the case. Um, while we're letting this play in the background, I kind of wanted to talk about, uh, oh god, here we go. The state of invasions in Elden Ring. Lord, uh, you haven't heard enough of this stuff. Um, the only reason I brought it up and mentioned it was, again, as I have said, I'm not playing as much Elden Ring recently. I am, because uh, I like to make videos, which are really fun. And I also like to do invasions every once in a while. I'll, I'll get the, the itch to play, and then I'll do a couple uh, and step back and do something else. Um, but I've, I'm always kind of you know, especially when new patches and things come out, I'm always scoping out the players that I that I kind of engage and get invasions with when I come back to Elden Ring. Um, and I've noticed a lot more, and again, this is just anecdotal evidence because of course it's anecdotal evidence, it's, it's me playing. Um, but I've come across a whole lot more passive parties, especially in the last couple of weeks um, of me playing it. And it's easy to say, you know, uh, basic statement like, oh, you know, that's just a player base getting more toxic. I, I don't think it's that. I think a lot of the passive play is, it comes back to something that I am Amish was talking about uh, when he was talking about his state of invasions back in 2018, more 2019. He had uploaded a chart back in that video um, that showed the graph was, the two axes were skill, uh, like uh, the player skill and player time in game. And he was talking about how in the beginning of Dark Souls 3's cycle, um, you know, invasions were a lot easier because invaders uh, had a whole lot more skill than hosts and phantoms did at the beginning because of the amount of time they put into the game and into invasions. But as the time the game was out uh, increased, that skill gap between invader and host and phantom decreased naturally because over time, as you're playing a game like Dark Souls 3, everybody starts to learn more and more things in the game, how to fight invaders, uh, little tactics for different weapons, how to fight in PvP, uh, and the skill ceiling um, gets harder and harder to raise if you're a player. Like you, obviously it makes sense, as you play a game, you know, you get to a certain point where it's harder and harder to improve because there's less and less to improve. And that skill gap between, um, you know, invaders, and as I said, four hosts and phantoms, really narrowed a lot, especially when you're fighting two or three against one, because they're just, it was, natural, it was a natural thing, it made sense, like over time, th that gap is going to decrease between players. Sorry, there's a school bus outside right now. Um, and I think it's kind of the case here in Elden Ring as well. There's obviously, we've all been playing this game for, what, how long has it been? Is it, has it been two years yet? Maybe it's been two years, it's probably less than that, uh, but it's been out for a long time. Uh, and the people that you're invading are not the unprepared uh, Elden Ring players that had never played a Souls game before this. They know what invasions are like. They have fought invaders and died to invaders many times before. 
So you're either gonna get you're either gonna get two different situations out of that. Either you're gonna get really aggressive players or you're gonna get really passive players. And then further from those two things, with those aggressive and passive players, you're gonna get fun invasions or invasions that are not so fun. This one is kind of in between. I had fun with this one, but they're also playing very passively and they're not really doing or taking any risks. Um, so I was enjoying, uh, for, I think that the difference was why I enjoyed this invasion was that it was a challenge. Uh, and despite Meta Blue Man here with, you know, right hard spear, dual Cestus, sleep pots and poise optimized armor, um, I was able to drag them through Noxtella, which is a fun level to play invasions through unless you have to use the, the, the bloody finger to get down to the bottom, then it's an awful level to play in. <laughs> um, uh, and so I was, I was enjoying this one, even though I wanted to make a point about this party. They have clearly come across invaders before they have a tactic for just either waiting them out, maybe making the, the red just bored enough to leave, uh, or, and just, you know, and you'll see later on when I get these two alone, spoilers, uh, <laughs> that uh, they'll use just basically dragon breath um, and I think that the host uses like a halberd with uh, chilling mist and um, Lord, what are those things called? Uh, oh, and perfumer, uh, the perfumer, uh, the uh, the was it the spark aromatic? Uh, when I get close, and so it's it's hard to engage, and they have a clear tactic for dealing with invaders, and it works pretty well. Um, but uh, this at this point in time in this invasion. Uh, I know that these players are decently experienced, or at least they're experienced in in wait in you know <laughs> wasting my time and also wasting theirs actually. Uh, so I'm just trying to annoy them enough with the bow, trying to get this blue alone uh, to you know eventually make one of them make a mistake and separate from the pack. Uh, and that's kind of the goal that you want to aim for. If there's three people, they're all playing very tightly together and they're not really approaching you uh, too closely, they're playing passively, one's not breaking away from the other. What you really, really need to do is you need to find the person who's least invested in staying in this world for like an hour plus uh, and separate them from the pack. Uh, and the way you kind of do that is you see who is the most aggressive, who is constantly separating from the pack the most. Uh, and if you look closely, you can see that this blue is getting more and more aggressive, which makes sense, he's a blue. And uh, he's in this world to fight me. That's why he was summoned. Um, and he has the least amount of incentive to stay in this world because he can't communicate with the host and Phantom and he wants to move on. Even if he is, even if he loves being a blue, even if this is his goal, he wants to move on to the next invasion. Especially because I'm not just walking into his, you know, his, his, all his meta shit that he's, <laughs> that he's using. But I know that this blue is going to follow me because, of course, he is and he thinks he's... He probably thinks at this point that he's, he can beat me one-on-one, -on -one, and that is a mistake. But I'm gonna use that and lure him here to the elevator with me. He actually has a pretty smart play here, um, but I know how to beat this Ash of War, jump over the second hit, and now he's stuck in a tight space with a two-handed Hyper Armor Flail and me. He's gonna start playing much worse, he's gonna panic roll, he's gonna get caught in a chain of attacks, and then he will roll himself off the ledge, and I will win that. All right, even though that blue is gone, obviously I need to start thinking about what I'm going to do with the host and phantom. So at this point in time, I'm observing because I'm down from this elevator. I'm keeping an eye on where the party tracker is on my compass. Because if I have to go up that elevator, I want to make sure they're not right above me because that would be a mistake. I'm just going to go up right into that fire breath right in my face. Um, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to wait and see what they're doing at the base of this elevator. And I can see they're creeping a little bit closer um, over time. And now, I think when I get out of this menu, I will see the compass is gone. Uh, yes, which means they're right above me. So I do not want to go up there and engage them. I want them to come down and engage me. So I'm thinking about some different things I can use when they come down. I've got Warcry on this halberd. Um, maybe I can catch them in a fully charged R2 thrust with it. I've got Poison Mist on that hatchet. Maybe I can cast it as soon as they come down on the elevator uh, and just get them in some poison that with that especially because it has great hyper armor values. Uh, I don't know, I'm thinking about a bunch of different things. Unfortunately, it doesn't pan out the way I want to because the host is prepared and they have chilling mist on that halberd and that immediately breaks my attack chain. I get hit by fire breath and I know uh, that I'm in a bad place. So I need to reset this as soon as possible. Fortunately, that elevator is down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run to it and we're gonna go up it and we're gonna reset this encounter. 
gonna clear off the uh, the frostbite I've got going on here. Make sure that I've got everything else in order. Change my weapons a little bit, and then come back down. I'll join you there in a second. Alright, now we got a little space to continue. I'm gonna re-engage that lightning slash on the flail for the damage. Make sure I've got my blue up and we're gonna re-engage. Now I know this host has a halberd that um, Phantom is gonna use that dragon breath whenever they get a chance because if you encounter someone using dragon breath, <laughs> they're probably gonna spam it even though it takes a ton of FP and it's not really that efficient. Um, so the point of this right now for me to get them off this platform. There are no enemies on this platform and they can sit up here all day and I do not want them to stay up here. I want them to get into those PvE enemies down below uh, and uh, fight me down there. But of course, they're not idiots. They're not going to just do that. I have to figure out a way to bring them down there either by knocking them off um, or getting them or some other way getting them down there. But I can see really quickly I'm running out of tenable space here and I can't stay up there. They're just going to catch me in that corner and I'm going to die. So unfortunately I have to disengage and come down here. This is a much worse place for me to put pressure on them because obviously they have the high ground, insert your Star Wars jokes here, um, and they have no incentive. They've shown no incentive this entire invasion to want to press me in any aggressive way. So they're just gonna sit up there the entire time and I know it. Um, so what can I do here? editing Rendon here. This part was not as clear and concise of an explanation as I wanted to, so I'm going to re-explain it now. Basically, what I was saying was that there are two options with the Phantom Bloody Finger here. One, I could hide behind some sort of rock or something uh, in the area to make them think that I'm still here and use the Phantom Bloody Finger uh, to get behind them and surprise them, but I really want them to leave that rock. So I'm going to, and what I will explain here again in a second is, use the Phantom Bloody Finger in their sight so that they'll know that I've left and they will actually progress in the map. So I'm going to let them see me use the Phantom Bloody Finger so they maybe will get off that platform and go down into the enemies down there in that second elevator. Now, it's a little risky though because the second elevator is a good choke point and that PVE and those PVE enemies down there are a good choke point to to kill them if I get the chance. But if they get past that second elevator down into the Noxtella the river basin down there, there's not a whole lot more enemies down there. So that and it's a narrower space, so that invasion will become much more difficult. But if they get slowed by those enemies at all, or if they stop at the elevator, I have a very good chance of winning. And you'll see why here in a second. Now I will come down the elevator and I will see that by their icon, the party icon, that they've moved on. So I've got to really race down there fast um, to try to catch up to them. Now I've seen they just avoided all the PV enemies up here and they went down the elevator. But fortunately for me, uh, and I find out in a second, they're down there at the bottom of the elevator. They got greedy. They want to catch me in an ambush and that's perfect. So I'm going to pull up the elevator and then I'm going to use the Phantom Bloody Finger so that I'm down there with them. Now that elevator if you're thinking clearly, means coming up means there's just a hole in front of them. And right here, I'm listening. I'm trying to see where they are. I hear one of them buff, and I know they're right by that door. And right in front of them is a hole, and they're thinking, I'm still at the top waiting for me to come down because I pulled the elevator up. Put Stormcaller Flail on, gonna activate it, gonna kill the host, and knock that phantom right into that hole. And I cheered in real life. <laughs> Use your brain and in invasions and thinking, you can win. Thanks for watching.